want to welcome everybody to His Glory Ministry as we continue our last uh, chapter in the book of Matthew. Tonight we will be closing out Matthew in Matthew 28. And as we always do, we invite the Holy Spirit to come down to each and every one of us on this broadcast from east to west to north to south, all over His Glory Nation. May the Holy Spirit be your teacher in the Word of God. With that said, let's get into it. Matthew 28, 1. And now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. So this is the day after the Shabbat, which was a Saturday. So this was um, Sunday, uh, which we call Easter. Uh, and that's also in the Jewish holidays, the day of first fruit. And Christ is our first fruit. And the first day of the week is a Sunday on the Hebrew calendar. So this is Sunday. Um, and Mary Magdalene and, and, and the other Mary came to see, and that other Mary is the Mary of Martha. Uh, Matthew 28, 2, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. So there's great, we, we talked about what a great earthquake was before and um, the, the power of what a resurrection would be. Um, again, I, took, I mentioned earlier that scientists have, have shown that a, the resurrection of Christ that actually would put an imprint on a piece of cloth would be equivalent to a Hiroshima bomb. So this is a huge, huge earthquake that tore the Holy of Holies, we know, the, the seven-foot uh, thick curtain in two. Um, so this earthquake uh, shook the world, uh, literally. The angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled the stone and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And, you know, some scholars will tell you that this was a holy angel that came down and opened this up. Some others will say, well, this is a form of Christ because he, it, throughout the, the scripture, is called an angel of the Lord. That's a constant idiom of a pre, um, pre-existing Jesus Christ, which we call a thenopony in the Old Testament. Um, either way, this is obviously from the Most High God, and this is announcing that our Messiah has risen. And it says his countenance was like lightning, his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear and became like dead men. So the guards, the Roman guards, were, were shaking. They knew that this was a supernatural event. Matthew 28, 5. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek the Christ, who is Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, and be, be, behold, I have told you. And then again, the angel is confirming that Christ uh, pro- prophesied that this would in, indeed happen, that on the third day he would rise, he would go back to meet the disciples in Galilee. He, he, he talked about that to his inner, inner circle um, uh, on the, the, the night before his crucifixion. And this is indeed happening. And all the ladies, and we also know from the other Gospels that Peter and John actually went in and saw the empty tomb that Christ was gone. And if you look, read the book of John carefully, they knew um, that Jesus was resurrected because how he folded the prayer shawl. And you'll notice in the book of John is the only of the Gospels that, it, that he folded his garment into the, the, the Hebrew a way of folding the prayer shawl. So when you see that, you know that uh, the Romans couldn't have done that and taken the body. Uh, it only had to be it had to be somebody that knew uh, of that tradition and they knew it was the Christ and that he he was gone. And uh, Matthew twenty eight seven and uh, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you, as we said. So then he went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring the disciples' word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Can you imagine this great reunion that Christ fulfilled 
his, his redemption is exactly, he said that in three days he would build the temple again, meaning the temple of God, who is Jesus Christ. He is the temple. That's why we worship. The temple is just a b building. The key to the whole temple is the Shekinah glory, the glory of God inside the temple. And Christ is that Shekinah glory. Christ is the second of the Godhead. Christ is God. And Christ is our Redeemer, our kinsman, completely uh, resurrected and showing his disciples that he is in a glorified body. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid and go tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there, there they will see me exactly the way he prophesied. Matthew 28, 11. Now, while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief Pharisees and uh, the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if, the, if, and if it comes to the governor's ear, we will appease him and make you secure. So what they're talking about is the Pharisees are trying to cover this, this up. So they're bribing the, the soldiers by saying, tell them that his disciples took him so that the world won't know that he was resurrected. Um, because obviously that would be, uh, a, 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 would be horrible for the Roman government and would be horrible for the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, even though that is what Christ's mission was. They completely missed it because of their hardened heart. So he bribed them. They, they, they bribed the, the, the guards, and they also bribed Pilate. So Pilate had to be involved in this because if he weren't, um, this, this whole scheme would have been unraveled. And uh, some scholars believe that this was, this was Pilate's last bribery, that this is indeed what we mentioned earlier, his strike three to Caesar. Uh, he was, remember we mentioned earlier that the, one of the, uh, uh, Pilate was in a pickle because he was appealed to Caesar twice on bribery cases uh, against the Jewish people. And he was fearful that if they went to a third time over Christ's death, that he would be killed and lose his governorship. So we see here, he's still, again, once you're in one lie, uh, the cover-up becomes more and more worse, uh, much worse. And this is exactly what Pilate did. He was part of the cover-up with these Roman soldiers and took the bribe to keep the, to, to, to appease everybody. And again, this is what um, um, some some scholars believe, including jo uh, secular Josephus, that this was his strike three that literally took uh, took his death. Um, so they took the money and did as they were instructed. And, and this, they say, commonly reported among the Jews until this day, saying that his, his, his disciples took him. Uh, remember that there was over 500 witnesses that saw Christ's resurrection, saw him in his glorified body. So uh, the, 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 this was no cover-up. Um, if the and then there's some scholars would say, well, the Romans took him, and some would say, well, the Pharisees and the Sadducees took him. Well, if the Romans or the Sadducees and the Pharisees had actually taken Jesus's body, the first thing they would have done is put him on a cart and put his dead body all the way through Jerusalem to show everybody in the world that this was a hoax. And obviously, that did not happen because they didn't have the body. Why didn't they have the body? Because he was resurrected, is exactly as he said. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And his word became truth. And he became our high priest. And the cover-up was done by the Pharisees and the Romans. And again, that was exposed by over 500 people. Uh, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So Jesus has taken on the authority of all of heaven and on earth. He is our high priest. He is the son of God. He is our kinsman redeemer, our Goel, our Messiah, and the second of the Godhead, God in the flesh. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So God, or through God, meaning Jesus Christ, our Messiah, is telling the disciples to go to all nations, and that's where we're at today, going to every nation, tribe, and tongue, speaking the gospel in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. See, specific about Elohim, the three parts of the Trinity, Father God, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, showing that there is only one God. His name is Elohim, and then the three. 
So there is no other God. So this, this falseness that you hear that Allah and Jehovah are the same God. Two questions. Did Allah ever have a son? And is Allah uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? No Islamic or Muslim will ever admit to either of those two because Allah is not Elohim. There is one God. His name is Elohim. He is the high of the highest. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Tau. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Holy Spirit, the one, the only. And we finish up in Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded, you and lo, I will, I will, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So Christ is telling us, once we accept him as our Lord and Savior, that the three parts in one are with us to the end of the age until he comes home and takes us home forever, for eternity, that we spend life with him forever. And that is our promise from him. He's with us always. God the Father is with us always. Jesus Christ is with us always. And he has left the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and dwelled inside of us to be our Comforter in all things and be our Teacher of the living Word of God, Jesus Christ. And again, that's why the Holy Spirit is our Teacher. And that's why we have to have the dual baptism. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The first baptism of the water baptism, making making showing of the rebirth coming out of the womb of being reborn again as a uh, uh, as a servant of Jesus Christ and accepting him as our lord and savior and repenting of all our sins and the second baptism is baptism of fire being baptized in the holy ghost and being baptized in the holy spirit and taking the manifests the manifest of the Holy Spirit and letting the power of the Holy Spirit continue to work with you to spread the gospel from east to west to north to south. I pray that the book of Matthew has been a blessing to you. May, God of, may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless each and every one of you on his glory nation. And I look forward to our next Bible study. In Jesus' name we pray. May God bless you.